Hello there, this is Carol from The Social Canvas. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a very quick tutorial on some feathers using a um, fan brush, which is this shape brush. Um, I will probably use a small brush in between for some other parts. So I've got a small, two small detail brushes here. You can see how small they are. I'm just working on a very small canvas here, which I think is about 12 by 12. Uh, anything will do though, whatever you've got. Acrylics of course need water, so do watercolours. Oil does not. <laughs> uh, pencils, you can do what you like. So uh, I'm going to just choose various colours for these feathers, but um, again, whatever you wish to do, um, then it's your choice. So I always wet my brush to begin with, so I'm going to choose the uh, uh, medium size uh, brush to begin with here and wet it. Um, kitchen towel is always handy. Uh, first of all I'm going to do my central area where I'm going to be painting. I'm just going to grab some white and a little bit, a tiny bit of black to make a, a very soft grey because um, I want it to be reasonably light but I probably will go over it again with white afterwards. So let me just roll my little brush there and I'm going to make, as I said, the central areas out I'm just going to start from the top and bring that line. I'm leaning on my canvas just so I get a nice steady hand and a bit of a, a nice curve. So try and sort of guide yourself on that one. Um, I'm going to do that first and then um, I'll probably see pencil marks on my canvas here because I was playing around with it earlier. And then that one I'm just going to Come off down there. Hopefully you can see that okay. This does not take long at all, so you'll be pleased to hear for those impatient painters. <laughs> I'm trying to keep these relatively in the middle, as in it's centralised, but they're probably not going to be quite as central as I'd like. So I've just put the middle sections in so I know where I'm going to run those. I'm just going to wash that one off. As I said, this is a very, very quick painting. I'm going to choose, first of all, uh, see mine's quite pink already because I've been dabbling with my pink. Um, I might just, um, no, I'm just going to use a, a pink, I think, on my, uh, I'm going to use pink, grey and a bit of blue on this one. So I'm just grabbing some white, first of all, now, what I'm going to do, I think, is a two-tone. So I've got white on my brush, but I'm going to grab a little bit of pink onto one side. A bit more pink, that is. I want to see how it turns out. So I'm going to start right at the bottom here of my, um, very slowly, right from that central, and I'm just flicking that out, as you can see from that central area. You can just go along like that and then flick it out, it's easier. You can maybe not see too much when it's white, so, but you can build on that colour. So if you want to um, put a bit more pink in, just make sure you've got plenty of white on your brush and um, add a bit more pink in. So there you go, you can see it now, just coming up with that. Or water. You can choose to use your acrylic a little bit like watercolour actually by adding more water. It does not matter if it's a bit watery. Uh, I'm trying not to get it to drip um, so I don't want too much water in it but it's getting that fine line between the two really. So I've got much more water on now you can see the effect it's having with a lot more water. I think I'm going to leave that about there because I want to do different colour at the top. So I've got pink. I think I'll do a little bit more pink right down the bottom here. Might be challenging if you're uh, doing it from a different angle, like me. And you can use this any. You can use this on the side like this if you want to, to get certain angles going as well. Again, I'm trying to make this a little bit darker at the bottom, so I'm just getting a bit more of the pink. I'm using 
um, Quinacridone Magenta for the bottom here, just to make it a little bit more pink. And of course there's little wispy bits on the bottom sometimes, so I'm just giving that a little wisp. Fun brushes, these ones. I think now I'm going to build up with a little bit of grey. So I'm going to wipe that off on some paper. Doesn't matter if it mixes a little bit with grey, I'm okay with that. So um, I'm going to go back to my grey that I had there. Because if you mix the grey in with a bit of pink, pink, it actually comes out quite a nice tone. And depending on how dark you like it, I would add some white in to make it a little bit more subtle. And then I'm going to come from this side and I'm going to see how that makes that a sort of a purpley grey actually. I quite like that. A bit more water I think I need. So I'm just going along the edge first next to my line and then flicking that out. And of course as you get up to the top of your feather and get a little bit slimmer. And you can always put some white accents in there too. Like that, very, make it very wispy. I was gonna paint the background and then I thought, you know what, no, I wanna see what it looks like on a white background first. And then I think I'm gonna end up on this side with a tiny bit of blue and I'm gonna be I'm not even gonna wash my brush off because I want it to be a similar tone but with a touch of blue in it so I'm not washing that off again I'm gonna see how this turns out see how I still got some of that tone in there my two-tone, three-tone you can add some touches in here and there as well like that it's quite pretty I'm going to go over my central part probably a bit more than it. I've got it there right now okay so while I've got that blue bluey grey on I kind of like that tone I like to tie my colours along here I'm going to go to the end one I'm going to grab a little bit more blue in with that grey, just a little bit more and a little bit more water on my brush. And I'm going to start at the top on this one and I'm just going to add in some of that blue. Again, I'm coming down the side and then flicking it out like that. I might get a little bit darker blue. Blue in there. You can start off with this brush and go to a smaller brush to put some details in, which is what I'm going to do in a minute. So I just wanted that blue at the top, and again, I'm going to grab a lot more white now because I want it to be very pale as I'm going down. So you can always wash your brush off if you find your your blue is still too dark. So I'll come to a very pale blue now. Like that, that's kind of a nice colour. I might flick some side bits out here as well, just to have some short and long areas. And you can also put some of your tips. This is a very nice one to do in watercolour too. I'm just putting some of my tips back in blue, very subtly there. Like that, I like that one. And at the bottom, I'm just going to wet my brush from my edge and I'm just bringing a few little bits out right at the base there, like that. 
just flick them out. side there. Okay, lovely. Then I think I'm going to do green on this side, but before I do that I'm going to tie in the middle one with some blue at the bottom. So I'm going to stick with my blue theme. Might make it a little bit darker to begin with, so I'm just grabbing. Uh, so the colours I'm using today, my, I've got a very messy palette here so I didn't want to show you it, <laughs> but I've got um, Windsor Blue, which is Windsor and Newton, I've got Farlow Green, I've got Black, Mars Black, I've got Titanium White, um, and I've got Quinacridone, Quinacridone Magenta, and I've got a bit of red, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use a red yet, I've not decided. So I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to start with a bit darker blue in the middle. So once I've got that on, I can flick it out to the side. Didn't make that as dark as I was going to, but so I'm going back in and putting a little bit more dark in there. A bit more water. Again, I'm just going to go along. I'm going to stop it there, I think, because I'm not going to do blue all the way up on this one. Just wanted to do a bit down the bottom there. And to tie in the blue, I'm actually going to do blue both sides at the bottom only on this one. You get to make sure you've got some nice moist paint on your brush, because if it gets dry it won't work as well of course. And I'm going on the side just to flick a few bits out here and there. Doesn't matter if they're not perfect, you see mine's quite haphazard in the middle. And then I think I'm going to wash that brush off, or if you've got the um, uh, pleasure of having more than one brush, <laughs> the word I was looking for, uh, which I have, I'm going to go to a clean brush, because I'm going to go switch my colours now, and I'm going to go to a... Um, I'm actually going to switch, I think, first of all, to a sort of a reddish colour. I'm going to use my red. I'm going to grab my yellow here and some white. So I'm going to make quite a light yellow tone and add a touch of red in so that's more of an orangey tone. See how this ties in? It may not do. I'm going to try it out though. So I've got a very light orange again. Let's see how this works. I'm going to try and this very gingerly because I don't really want to mix the blue in with it so I'm not going down into my blue with this. That's a very pale one as you can see so I'm going to add a bit more red and yellow to make it stand out a little bit more. I think I'm going to finish it. This is going to be my three-tone one. I'm going to leave that there. And try and go around my blue so I don't mix it in. It's kind of more of like a peachy, a peachy red, I want to say. A peachy, a peachy uh, yellow, <laughs> orange. Get the right word here in a minute. I've just grabbed some more red and some more yellow. Again, you can flip this out however you want. So the more water you have on that, the easier it is to flick it out. So again, if you like the drippy effect, great, go for it. But I'm trying not to do that. Whoops. Gets a bit far out. Right. All right. And I'm going to finish with a little bit of yellow, uh, yellowy green, I think. So I'm going to again wash that off. I'm going to get my yellow to the side with a bit of white. First of all, and a very, very light touch of the um, green, which is the Farlow green. And, you know, we'll see how this ties in. This is quite a bright green, really. Again, I'm trying not to overlap my um, colours here, in this case, anyway. Oh 
you go. That's my two-tone, three-tone look. And then on this one, I'm going to stick with my green. A bit more green and yellow mixed. So again, a little bit of white always makes it easier to, to uh, make it visual. Right up to the edge, a few flicks. Yeah, so you can put different colors on each side of your brush so that when you put it on, it comes out like different tones. I'm going to put a bit of white in there, a bit of yellow. I'm not going to push this one. This feather is a little bit slimmer. It's kind of turning round a bit. So I don't want too much of uh, too much on that side. Like that. And then flick a little bit here and there. dark going in there just to overlap that a little bit like that okay so I'm gonna just um, go over my central area a little bit with some white now I'm not going to use that fan brush for that I'm just going to go back to my uh, round brush give that a good clean up and I'm going to grab my white um, on the brush and I like to roll it on the palette just so it's not. I'm just going to go over some of this central area with the white just so it stands out a little bit more. That's better. It's nice and bright. Rolling the brush on your palette on the side gives you a better point, so that's why I do that. Start with this one in the middle somewhere. Right. So as I started with this one first, it is getting quite dry. I'm going to just add some, um, I was going to say sparkle, but not really sparkle. Um, just some little accents here and there. So like, if you do look at some um, feathers, they have little circles on them. And I'm just putting some little circle accents on here. I'm trying to stick to the darkest areas so that they show up like that. I kind of like that. That looks all right. That's good enough. Might need to go over that again, but I think that makes it stand out. I'll do a similar thing on here, although what I'm going to do on this one, I think, is um, I'm actually going to do no, I'm going to do some little, little white, sort of very fine, stripey bits on here, like that. You can give them any kind of a pattern that you want to, of course. But I'm just going to streak some of this in right from the outside. Well, it's always good to fix anything that you don't like to. Orange, I've decided, is a little orange and in your face, so I might just add, I'm going to see if I can add a little um, pink, actually, over here 
to tie in the pink. As I said, um, I do like to tie in different colours. I'm going to see what it looks like first of all. It may not look right, but you know what? I can try it out. So maybe I need a little bit lighter pink. Circle some pink in there. I may just do some different colours. Of course you can match whatever uh, tones that you want. Let's say you want something simple in your bathroom. <laughs> something nice to look at. Well, you know, this will be it. Yeah, I'm not keen on pink. Now I'm going to grab some darker green. Keep washing my brush off in between, just so that you know, just so I get, um, I don't mix my colours up. Yeah, so the pink doesn't work as well on the orange, so I am going to ignore that. Go back to the orange that I had, but I'm just making it a little bit darker with some red, and that way I can hopefully go over this color. Sometimes you just have to try things out and see how they work. If they don't look right, then you know what? You can paint over it. Okay. I think I like the white more than I do any other colour on that. So I'm going to go back to my white and I'm going to bring some white in here too. I match some speckles rather than big dots on that one. It stands out a lot more of course on a dark background. Some of those white going over that middle bit again. And this one is going over my white there a little bit and let me think okay so I think on this one I'm also going to stick with my sort of a light green white so it's got a touch of white in there but it's also a soft green and then again this is something you can decide to change up I'm just trying to decide if there's something I want to do on that you now sometimes you just have to Decide on your colours and then go for it. I think I'm going to add some green, light green over here so that I can tie in a little bit of that green over this side. Let's see. Don't forget to roll your brush if you find that the point isn't staying where it should. Need a little bit more yellow. Make it a little bit more yellowy green. And I might just add some very light yellow touches on there too. Like that. That sort of makes it stand out a little bit. And some little small dots. Proliferate those like that. And I'll just, um, I'm going to put some over here, the very subtle ones too. A little bit lighter green so they show up. Lots of little dots. I'm 
Okay. All right. And finally, I'm just going to get my grey back again. I'm going to make it slightly darker grey this time than I had it in the first place. So that when I say darker grey, it's black and white, of course. And that depends on how much black you put in it as to how much, uh, how dark you're going to get it. Um, I like to start out light, and if I don't like it, then I can get a bit darker. Uh, I just want to accent my uh, central bit a little bit more, starting from here, right by the side of the white, not over the white. I'm just going to accent one side of the uh, quill, I think it's called, <laughs> in the middle. Those out a bit more, a little bit thicker in the middle. That's better. Same here, I'm just going to very delicately go down the middle and out the side. It doesn't matter if you the quill bit at the end is a little bit wider, can be, if you want it to be. And a little bit of water in there would be good. Pressed a bit harder on the end so that I could get my point a little bit more um, like that. Okay, I think uh, final touches for that. It's very simple painting as you can see, nothing special, but if you want to paint the background in, well, that's something you can do beforehand if you want, um, or um, if you do it afterwards, you probably see I've got some pencil marks in there, which is uh, ignore that. With a bigger brush, it's probably a good idea. The also, the other thing I wanted to um, suggest to you, if you want to do this, is get some very get your little fan brush back again. Get some water on it, make it quite uh, wet. Choose a colour that you like in here. Let's say you like uh, uh, the pink. If you want to get a very watery pink, so get lots of water on your brush. Plonk it in your. Um, on your palette there and you can splatter some of that just make sure it's not going all over yourself at the same time I managed to get it on myself <laughs> somehow if you do no worries it washes off quite easily so don't worry about that just be very gentle with it when you're doing it though harder you press the more it comes out <laughs> so a little splattering on there kind of gives it a little uh, little something interesting right and you can do that with a couple of different colors if you want um, I'm not really sure if any other color would look great but you know what I'm gonna try a little bit of uh, the gray color that I had it may not look right but I'm gonna give it a go you know sometimes you just have to try these things and if they work out, they work out. If they don't, then, you know, I'm your, uh, you, you know, don't go any further unless you're happy with what you've got. <laughs> I'll try that again. There you go. Perfect. So now we've got a little splattering all over my, myself. Um, and that's it really. So I hope you've enjoyed that short tutorial and uh, I'd love to see your paintings if you want to uh, send them to the Social Canvas Facebook page. Uh, if not, uh, no worries.
Just let me know what you think. See you soon. Bye.